So Intel is continuing to develop uh, new generations of logic technology, uh, 22 nanometer, 14, and in the future, 10 and 7 nanometer. The uh, 22 nanometer technology has been in high volume manufacturing now for a couple of years. And uh, today we have shipped, Intel has shipped uh, more than 500 million uh, chips using this uh, technology, using this first generation of uh, 3D trigate or FinFET transistors. But now, uh, the next generation is here, the 14 nanometer generation. It's in volume manufacturing. So this is Intel's scaling trend, going back uh, almost 40 years now, where we develop new generations of technology, scaling feature size by about 0.7x per generation to achieve a smaller transistors. And why do we do that? And why do we continue to do that? Well, it's because transistors, scaled transistors, provide higher performance, lower power, and lower cost per transistor. This is the definition of Moore's Law, and at least for Intel, Moore's Law continues. So how small exactly is 14 nanometers? So, let me try to describe that. I'll start with this uh, dimensional scale, the horizontal scale here, uh, ranging all the way from a big dimension to some meters on the left, and down to millimeters, then micrometers, or microns as we sometimes describe it, and finally down to the nanometer regime. And this scale covers up 11 orders of magnitude, so from the large to the extremely tiny. So to put this into perspective, on the left side, <laughs> there's me in all of my 1.66 meters of height. Uh, that's, that's the large size of the scale. Going down the scale, uh, the uh, average house fly about uh, seven millimeters, a uh, uh, mite uh, about uh, 300 microns in diameter, uh, the human red blood cell about seven microns in diameter, uh, viruses typically around 100 nanometers, and then finally at the uh, smallest end of this spectrum, uh, the, the smallest spacing between silicon atoms in the uh, silicon crystal is about uh, one quarter of a, of a nanometer. So this is a uh, 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 shows you the, the range of, of dimensions from uh, you know, the real world where we live and see to the very tiny world that uh, is beyond what we can see. And that's where this 14 nanometer technology uh, exists. It's, uh, uh, the smallest dimension, the uh, smallest critical dimension, as I'll describe on the next slide, is the uh, diameter, the width of, of the silicon fin that the trigate transistor is made from. That's uh, about 8 nanometers. Uh, but there are many other dimensions used in the process for the various transistor uh, masks and the uh, interconnect levels. Uh, that, that probably range, you know, from 10 up to 100 nanometers in, in minimum size. So that's uh, where the 14 nanometer process resides. And again, this is in volume manufacturing today. So here's a close-up view of uh, uh, a pair of these silicon fins used. Uh, in a 14 nanometer trigate transistor, the gate electrode at the top, uh, and you can see the two silicon fins there and wrapping around uh, each of the silicon fins is the uh, high K layer, uh, the insulated layer. And uh, this technology, as I already mentioned, we have scaled the fin width down to an eight nanometers, a very tiny dimension. And the uh, minimum fin pitch, uh, that's the center to center spacing of two fins, is uh, 42 nanometers. But more on this transistor in coming slides. And as I mentioned, uh, this technology and the lead product, the Intel Core M processor, are now qualified and in a volume production. And it's this lead of product, the first of product on the Intel 14 nanometer technology, uh, uh, has uh, 1.9 billion transistors, and the chip size is uh, 82 square millimeters, uh, the size of a small fingernail. All right, continuing on, now a little more description about the uh, second generation of a trigate <coughs> transistor. So here's a, a brief table of some of the uh, key feature sizes on any logic technology, the transistor fin pitch, the transistor gate pitch, and then the uh, high vista interconnect layer pitch. Uh, for Intel, the uh, 22 nanometer generation was our first generation of uh, trigate uh, transistors. Uh, the pin pitch there was 60 nanometers, so we scaled that by 0.7x to achieve uh, 42 nanometers on this uh, 14 nanometer technology. 
uh, transistor gate pitch was scaled from uh, 90 to 70 nanometers. And then the uh, tightest interconnect layers uh, have scaled their pitch from 80 nanometers to 52 nanometers. And all told, uh, these uh, scale factors average you know, close to 0.7x, close to the value that any uh, new logic technology would require to achieve something close to uh, a 0.5x uh, uh, area scaling. So I believe it's correct to say that uh, uh, this technology, Intel's 14 nan nanometer technology, is a true 14 nanometer technology that does provide good area scaling, good dimensional scaling. So next I have a, a series of cartoons showing how we've uh, uh, scaled the fins from our first generation Trigate device on 22 nanometer, that's the, the left cartoon, to the uh, 14 nanometer process uh, on the right. So again, starting off with the uh, first generation, the fin pitch then was uh, 60 nanometers, and the fin height was 34 nanometers. <coughs> so the first thing we did on 14 was scale the fin pitch to 42. Uh, by having a tighter fin pitch, uh, we have improved the layout density uh, of the transistors. Next thing we did was uh, we uh, made the fins both taller and thinner. So now the, uh, the fin height is 42 instead of 34 nanometers. That tighter fin pitch that, and the skinnier fin to the thinner fins and the taller uh, fins provide improved uh, transistor performance, especially at low voltage. And next, transistors are often made with more than one fin, sometimes two, three, four fins if you want to gang together multiple fins to achieve higher drive current and higher performance. And that's what we did on the first generation. But now in the second generation, we are able to depopulate some of the things, that is, make transistors out of a pure number of fins. And this achieves even greater density improvement and also lowers capacitance. You want to lower the parasitic capacitance uh, so that you can reduce the active power of the chip. And then just to complete the cartoon that I show here, how we uh, finish the structure by forming the high-K uh, dielectric in yellow around the fins, and then the uh, metal gate electrode in blue. So that's a uh, side-by-side cartoon comparison of the first generation of trigate transistor on left and the second generation of 14 nanometer generation on, on the right. And here are our actual uh, highly magnified uh, images of those uh, transistors, uh, again from our 22 nanometer process and now the 14 nanometer process. And you can see how the fins are taller and skinnier and packed more closely together on this uh, second generation of the Trigate. But of course, a logic technology is not just a matter of developing smaller, faster, and more powerful transistors. Interconnects are also a highly critical to a logic technology, and you need a combination of interconnects. The lower layers, uh, those uh, one, two, three, uh, tend to want to be the tightest pitch you can do to achieve the, the very best density that you can, that you want, uh, connecting together all of the transistors uh, to form some circuits. But the next couple of layers, uh, uh, the upper layers, layers uh, six, seven, eight, nine, tend to want to be thicker and coarser than layers of. Uh, more copper, so that they have lower resistance and higher speed. It's those upper layers that uh, uh, send the signals across the chip, uh, so they go a greater distance and uh, much more sensitive to uh, performance. So again, the interconnect stack, which might be 10, 11, 12 layers or more, uh, is a mixture of uh, fine pitch layers at the bottom for density, coarse pitch layers at the top for good performance. And on this 14 nanometer technology, we continue with that, that, uh, that basic strategy. And the lowest layers um, uh, can use the 52 nanometer pitch, uh, uh, which provides a very good scaling compared to the 80 nanometer minimum pitch on the uh, previous generation. So that's better than normal interconnect scaling to help us achieve better than normal area scaling. Another very important uh, element of any logic technology are the memory cells, the SRAM uh, memory bits. Uh, here's a top-down view of uh, two of those cells. Uh, these are both six transistor cells, uh, uh, SRAM bit cells from 22 nanometer left, 14 nanometer right. You can see the area of each bit cell has scaled from 0.108 square microns down to 0.0588 square microns. 
So that's about a 0.54x area scaling, uh, uh, pretty good scaling, again, for uh, any new generation. And uh, this small bit cell comes about from both the very tight design rules provided on 14 nanometer, plus the uh, performance attributes of our second generation tri-gate transistor. So combined, uh, this uh, small bit cell is, uh, at least to date, uh, uh, the smallest bit cell any company is yet uh, Manufacturing. All right, now let me talk about the logic area scaling. This is uh, Intel's trend uh, <coughs> plotting uh, uh, transistor gate pitch on a vertical scale uh, versus technology node, from our, ranging from our 45 nanometer generation to 32, 22, 14, and 10. So we've been scaling a gate pitch by about uh, 0.8x per generation. That's been scaling a little bit slower than other dimensions, uh, namely because uh, a gate pitch, uh, uh, you need to get, achieve a good balance of performance, density, and low leakage. And uh, we found uh, that at least recently, in recent generations, uh, 0.8x uh, scale factor provides that best uh, balance of uh, those factors to get performance, density, and uh, low leakage. The next graph here is, uh, shows our trend for scaling a metal pitch, uh, again, very important for achieving good density and logic technologies. Uh, here we've been achieving uh, about 0.7x, and uh, on this recent 14 nanometer generation, better than a 0.7x, actually 0.65x uh, scaling on, on any kind of pitch. So that is providing better than normal area scaling on, on this generation. Now, before I go on to my uh, subsequent slides, which uh, compare Intel logic area scaling to what others in the industry are doing, I want to start by just describing this simple uh, area scaling metric. Uh, this, consider this a top view of a, of a logic cell, and the uh, x dimension of the cell is defined by the gate pitch, and the y dimension of the cell is defined by the metal pitch. So the uh, total area scaling is, achieved, is defined by gate pitch scaling times uh, metal pitch scaling. Very simple metric, but it's an easy way to compare different technologies coming from different companies. So I'll start uh, by using that metric on Intel technologies, um, showing, um, so again, starting with our 45 nanometer generation on the left, uh, up to and including our, our 14 nanometer technology. And again, using that simple uh, gate pitch times metal pitch metric, uh, our error scaling is uh, averaging about 0.53x per generation, pretty much what uh, Moore's law uh, calls for. Now, if I add uh, to this graph what some other companies in our industry are doing, uh, uh, shown here in red, it appears that uh, indeed they have had uh, denser technologies using this metric uh, than Intel has. Uh, uh, so, either usually, typically uh, they've had slightly tighter gate pitch. But although they have better density or had better density, they did come later than Intel. So on the horizontal scale, if I had plotted this graph in time, in years, instead of uh, by technology node, then that red curve would have been to the right of the Intel curve. Uh, because we've always uh, ramped our technologies, introduced our technologies uh, earlier than, than, than other uh, companies in the industry. <clears throat> Also notice on the horizontal scale, the different uh, technology node names, uh, um, the industry has kind of uh, diverged in using slightly different node names for pretty similar technologies. So what Intel called uh, our 45 nanometer technology, other companies uh, call it as their 40, and then what we call it as our 32, they call, it as, uh, call their technologies 38. And, and now today, uh, uh, Intel's 22 nanometer technology, uh, others refer to their version as a 20 nanometer. Well, looking forward at uh, what other companies have published, uh, uh, they're going to be pausing area scaling for the most part uh, at what they call their 16 or 14 nanometer generation, and then resume uh, normal scaling as they go from their 16, 14, eventually to, to their 10 nanometer generation. And the reason for this is that uh, uh, that last solid red data point is a planar transistor, whereas uh, Intel has been using tri gate or pin-fed transistors now for both our 22 and, and our 14. So they are they're having to pause at area scaling you know, for the most part as they uh, develop their pin-fed version of the technology. And then they, they call that pin-fed version either 16 or 14, even though uh, they, they've 
quite clearly stated that eight pitch and metal pitch are the same on what they call 20 versus what they call 14. So here's another way to look at that graph. Uh, uh, Intel introduced uh, its first generation uh, Trigate or FinFed technology at the 22, and, and now 14 is our second generation. Uh, other companies in the industry are, are just beginning to, and uh, maybe sometime next year they'll come out with uh, their first FinFed uh, generation. Uh, and even though the error scaling is about the same, they, they're going to call it the 16 or 14 nanometers. So again, uh, earlier I referred to uh, Intel's uh, 14 nanometer technology as a true 14, and it's, uh, it's both because Intel is a denser and earlier the one other companies call 16 nanometers or 14. Okay, next uh, let me talk about cost per transistor. And cost per transistor is uh, one of the fundamental benefits of Moore's Law. From the very first day when Gordon Moore described uh, his observation of how the integrated circuit business was evolving, that we developed smaller feature size primarily to achieve lower cost per transistor. And if you have lower cost per transistor, then you can build chips, whether they're memory chips or logic chips, that use more transistors and, and do more things. So first I'll start uh, with this graph that uh, illustrates uh, cost per square millimeter for uh, Intel technologies, uh, normalized to our 130 nanometer generation. And you can also view this as a cost per wafer uh, chart as well, pretty much uh, the same thing. Um, and as you can see, not only is the cost, uh, does, does the cost go up each generation as you add a few more masking steps or thin films or whatever, but the cost is rising at an accelerated rate uh, over the past uh, generation or, or two. And other co companies have commented on that as well, that uh, wafer cost is, is growing at a, an unusually high rate uh, because we have to add more masking layers, more double patterning steps, and even in some cases, some uh, triple patterning steps. But my next graph here shows uh, area per transistor. So yes, you you spend the money in those extra masks to enable smaller transistors. And at least at Intel, that's a, a, a trend that has actually improved on the 14 nanometer generation. We are achieving a, a much faster reduction in transistor area on this generation than we have on, on any uh, previous technology generation. So although we're spending more for the wafers, we're getting more from that, uh, uh, less area per transistor. <coughs> And then the net result is the uh, third graph in this set of bills, the, the cost per transistor, where Intel, uh, over many generations, has been able to continually reduce cost per transistor by making them smaller. And even on this 14 nanometer generation, even though the wafer cost is going up at a higher rate than normal, we are still achieving the same, or actually better than normal, cost per transistor reduction. Right, let me talk now about the product benefits from this technology. Here's a graph that's uh, illustrating uh, leakage power on the vertical scale, so lower is better, versus uh, transistor performance on the horizontal scale. So to the right, it means you have a faster transistor. And each generation, we try to develop improved transistors that push these curves <coughs> down and to the right, providing uh, better lower leakage or better performance or some combination of a better leakage and performance. And the other uh, key factor, key uh, point I want to make about these curves is that we try to widen the range of transistors that we provide. Uh, back in the 65 nanometer generation, it was kind of a one size fits all uh, era. You know, one transistor, make it as fast as we can. Uh, but now in the SOC era, we're trying to develop a broader range of transistors that meet both very low leakage requirements for some circuit applications and also a very high performance uh, transistor for other applications. So that's uh, illustrated on this uh, next bill showing how uh, uh, the same, the, the family of 14 nanometer transistors is designed to support a wide range of products uh, from the high performance servers and client computing to uh, uh, mobile laptops and two-in-ones, uh, 
all the way down to the uh, ultra low leakage needed on the always on circuits on uh, handheld and mobile devices. And these transistor benefits, uh, uh, higher performance, lower active power, uh, really benefit a wide range of uh, market segments, whether it's the, the server segment or the laptop segment or, or the mobile segment. They all, might, they all benefit from these uh, improved uh, transistors. And, and whether you design a product to use more of the low power aspects or use more of the high performance aspects of, of the transistors that are provided, in, in either case, the real benefit that you're achieving is improved performance per watt. And over the past uh, you know, three or four generations, Intel has been achieving, by process technology, about a 1.6x improvement per generation improvement in performance per watt. And again, that performance per watt can be used by individual products as either more of a performance gain or more of a power reduction. But I think what's uh, really exceptional about the uh, Intel Core M processor that's been talked a lot about uh, already at, at this uh, developer forum is that it achieves actually much better than the normal trends. It achieves more than a 2x improvement in a performance per watt. Uh, so it's better than Intel's historic trend. And why is that? Well, for a couple of reasons. Number one, our second generation Trigate transistors uh, provide improved low voltage performance and the lower leakage. Uh, number two, the 14 nanometer technology provides better than normal area scaling, and smaller area typically means lower parasitic capacitance, so there's less, less switching capacitance as the, the cores and the graphics units are operated. Number three, uh, quite extensive uh, design process co optimization between the, the process development team that I'm a part of and the, uh, the core M you know, process design team. So. Uh, most of us work together up in the Oregon site and uh, can share notes on uh, what one can provide, what the other one needs, and, and make adjustments uh, to deliver the very best product that we can. And then lastly, uh, I tip uh, my hat to the uh, uh, Core M process design team and some of the micro-architectural improvements or optimizations that they've done uh, to reduce the active power reduction and buy that chip. So again, a combination of process technology, uh, design and microarchitecture improvements uh, resulted in, uh, again, a better than 2x improvement in performance per one. So again, a closer look at the Core M processor, and I think other talks have described this in, in more detail, but it uh, uh, provides uh, up to 50% faster CPU performance uh, versus the previous generation, up to 40% uh, uh, faster graphics performance versus the previous generation. Uh, longer battery life, uh, it only consumes 4.5 watts. Um, no fans, so it's a fanless design. 60% uh, uh, reduction in the thermal design point. And it's a conflict-free uh, uh, product. Uh, uh, it doesn't use any of the conflict-free materials uh, that we're talking about in a, another session that yesterday's uh, So uh, to recap, uh, the Core M processor, uh, the very dense 14 nanometer process features provide a good die area scaling compared to the previous generation. If we had designed a feature neutral version of this product, uh, the whole die size would have scaled by about 0.51x. And that's including uh, the cores and the graphics and the I.O. and the SRAM and all the other circuits on, on, on the chip. But of course, the, the Core M processor is, is larger than that uh, because they added more features. Again, some of the performance and microarchitectural improvements. Uh, but nonetheless, it's about a 0.63x with those added features, uh, error scaling compared to the previous generation. And 14 nanometer manufacturing, this chip is now uh, qualified. It's in volume production. Uh, yields are in a healthy range uh, with further improvements coming. Uh, both process and product are qualified, and the 14 nanometer manufacturing tabs are located uh, first uh, here, uh, there in Oregon and uh, in Arizona, uh, and then next, early next year in uh, Ireland. So those are the, the three main manufacturing sites uh, uh, targeted right now for the 14 nanometer technology. Now let me talk about the uh, SOC uh, feature menu. 
Um, in the past, uh, Intel would develop uh, two flavors of each technology. One flavor that we would refer to as the CPU version, for the high performance CPUs. Another flavor for the SOC version, the system on chip version. Uh, and you could probably think of the SOC version as a superset of the CPU version. Same basic uh, transistor structure, basic transistor materials, um, design rules, same uh, minimum uh, interconnect pitches at the lower layers. But what the SOC menu would add would include uh, high voltage transistors, uh, uh, ultra low leakage transistors for the hours on, hours connected circuits, uh, precision resistors, inductors, and a few other elements. So think of SOC as a superset of the CPU process. And as I, as I started out saying, Intel used to develop two versions, CPU and SOC. Now those two versions have blended together so much, it's no longer a fair way to describe them as two versions. It's really a, a whole spectrum of, of flavors or versions that we can offer from the, the higher performance end all the way down to the uh, much lower power end, and with various features and uh, different transistor and interconnect options. So this first graph illustrates uh, three of the uh, general uh, transistor options uh, uh, available. Uh, this is a graph of uh, total leakage on the vertical scale versus a uh, transistor gate delay on the horizontal scale. So in this case, uh, you want to be down for low leakage and you want to be uh, to the left uh, for high performance. And uh, we offer three general uh, uh, families of transistors, referred uh, to as the high performance, general, general performance, or low power. Um, so the high performance uh, version is uh, furthest to the left, so it has uh, the very best speed of all three of these options. But the leakage floor is higher, so we have to give up somewhat on leakage floor uh, to achieve that the highest performance. But on the other end of the spectrum, the, the low power family, uh, push a little bit to the right, so a little bit slower transistors, but the leakage floor is much lower, where we really want uh, ultra low leakage for a very long battery life on uh, handheld devices. Uh, we also offer a wide range of interconnect stacks. Uh, the more that I can put in one slide, but uh, the lower layers, you know, levels one, two, three, can be the same across all of them. But there is a, uh, a quite a degree of customization allowed in the middle and upper interconnects. You can uh, uh, choose an inter interconnect stack like on the left uh, with a minimal number of layers for low cost, or use a stack like in the middle where you use uh, a large number of the minimum pitch layers so you get the very best density, or maybe a stack, an interconnect stack on the right where you use more of the coarse pitch layers for high performance. So again, there's a range of options available in terms of uh, what interconnect stacks and mixing and matching uh, dense interconnect layers versus uh, higher performance interconnect layers. <coughs> and again, I, I described the, the SOC version as a, a superset. Uh, this, this illustrates uh, some of those uh, other features, uh, device features available on, on SOC uh, that maybe aren't used on the mainstream uh, CPU products. Uh, starting from the top, uh, IQ inductors, uh, high density MIM caps, uh, precision resistors, uh, uh, RF transistors, uh, very low leakage of uh, long AM transistors, and uh, high voltage uh, IO transistors. So the, again, 14 nanometer technology uh, provides a full menu of SOC device options. And if you want to hear more about uh, our SOC technology and the different features, uh, Please attend uh, Senator Ricky's talk at uh, 4 o'clock this afternoon. <coughs> okay, so to uh, summarize, Intel has developed a true 14 nanometer technology uh, with an uh, industry leading performance, power, density, and cost per transistor. Uh, the 14 nanometer technology and the lead processor product uh, are now qualified and in a volume production. A uh, full menu of SOC transistor and interconnect features uh, are provided. And Intel's 14 nanometer technology will, will be used to manufacture a, a wide range of products from a high performance uh, to low power. Uh, we'll continue to provide improvements in performance, power, and cost, but I'll have to leave that to another idea. <coughs>